Thank you for tuning into the Spooky Scary Show, where two friends in two different states discuss all things spooky, creepy, and just downright strange. This is our very first episode, and there's no better way to kick things off than by telling you the origin of our names. So, my name came from, like, my first year of high school, I think. Uh, I've had pink hair pretty much since then, and people just started calling me Pinky, and it stuck around. So, yeah. <laughs> my name is Dolly. Um, my name was given to me by my grandpa, because when I was first born, my older sister used to try and play with me, and she would say, Dolly, Dolly, I just want to play with Dolly, and that just kind of stuck around. So, um, yeah. Nice to meet you. So let's get started. So I chose a window story. So this one I found was very interesting because it ends up to actually be a real thing. Um, there are pictures on the drive that we can share, and then maybe we will also share those pictures onto our Facebook and Instagram accounts if you guys want to see them as well. So, I will just jump right into it. So, Wendigo, sometimes known as Wendigo, I'm probably saying this wrong, is an evil spirit native American, native to American folklore. It is known for its connection with the worst sin of all, cannibalism. Ooh. According to the dating back to the 1800s, Humans giving into cannibalism, even for their own survival, call the curse of the Wendigo upon themselves. So if you just imagine, like, you're freezing your butt off in the middle of winter, you're in Canada, and you're starving, like, what are you going to do? You're going to eat some people. <laughs> Yikes. Um, yeah. <laughs> so... They undergo a transformation, air quotes, into a man-like beast. Now, they don't, like, physically transform, but their minds are seeking only one thing, more human flesh to consume. Um, so, a little description I got from Wikipedia. It's, when spotting prey, Wendigos often, if not always, some in a snowstorm so cold that the trees would start to crack. This is to hide their approach, for the storm fills the air with snow and noise. Before a human knows what's happening, the Wendigo grabs him or her and begins to dine. Now, that's just like what the natives say when, like, the spirit takes over you. Um, the belief of the Wendigo is so strong among some tribes that it has become a very real mental illness among some people, known as Wendigo psychosis. Yeah, I've heard of that before. Um, yeah? Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. Um, those with Wendigo psychosis live with the constant fear that they will become a monster if they accidentally eat human flesh. Um, that they will constantly pursue more and more. One, so this is where it gets works pretty good. So <clears throat> one true life Wendigo is my story, and his name is Swift Runner, and he is from Plains Cree in Alberta. So this is his story. So during the winter, a Wendigo ate Swift Runner's family. Swift Runner was a Cree hunter and trapped from the country north of Fort Edmund. Probably said that wrong. He was a big man, over six feet tall, and well liked. He was mild and trustworthy and considerate husband, and very fond of his children as well. Um, all of these traits endeared him to his people and to the traders of the Hudson's Bay Company. But this was not enough to 
allay suspicion when he returned from his winter cap camp in the spring of 1879 without his wife and family. Um, when he could not give a satisfactory account for their whereabouts, his in-laws became very worried. They decided to tell the Northwest Mounted Police who had been in West for just five years. So the police around for very long. Um, Inspector S, I want to probably say his name wrong as well, so forgive me. Inspector S. Gagnon was given the task of investigating Swift Runner's behavior. He and a small party of policemen accordingly trekked out to the trapper's camp. This is where it gets pretty good. Swift Runner willingly showed the mounted policeman a small grave near his camp. He explained that one of his boys had died and was buried there. Gagbon and his officers opened the grave and found the bones undisturbed. That, however, did not explain the human bones scattered all around the encampment. The sergeant produced a skull, which Swift Runner willingly told him that that was his wife. You. Without much, I know, <laughs> without much prodding, Swift Runner revealed what had happened to the rest of his family. At first, Swift Runner became haunted by dreams. A Wendigo spirit called on him to consume the people around him. The spirit crept through his mind, gradually taking control. And this is a true story. Finally, he was Wendigo and Swift Runner no longer. Then the Wendigo killed and ate Swift Runner's wife. Finally, he was Wendigo and Swift Runner no more. Then the Wendigo killed and ate Swift Runner's wife. This accomplished, the Wendigo forced one of his sons to kill and butcher his younger brother. While enjoying this grisly repast, the spirit hung Swift Runner's infant by the neck from a lodge pole and tugged at the baby's dangling feet. It was later shown that he had also done away with his own brother and his mother-in-law, though he acknowledged that the mother-in-law had been a bit tough. So she was putting up a fight. Yikes. The, re yeah. <laughs> the revolted mounted police party hauled Swift Runner and the mutilated evidence back to Fort Saskatchewan. The trial began on August 8th, 1879, which, if you guys don't know, my birthday is August 9th, but it's actually, you know, 1994. But <laughs> his trial began on August 8th, 1879. The judge and jury did not view the Wendigo idea in the same light as the tribe. They saw Swift Runner as a murderer, and the trapper made no attempt to hide his guilt. Swift Runner was quickly sentenced to be hanged. The sentence presented a problem. The police had never before conducted an execution. Although the Hudson's Bay Company had once changed employee for murder, this was, for all intents and purposes, the first formal execution in Western Canada. Wow. So the staff sergeant, I know, isn't that crazy? Canada, you so nice. <laughs> <laughs> the staff sergeant, Fred Bagley, a horse burglar, was put in charge of the arrangements. The gallows was erected within the fort enclosure at Fort Saskatchewan, and an old army pensioner named Rogers was made hangman. On the appointed morning, a bitterly cold December 20th, Swift Runner was led to the scaffold. Standing over the trap, the cannibal was given the opportunity to address the large crowd that had gathered. 
He openly acknowledged his guilt and thanked his jailers for their kindness. Then berated the guard for making him wait in the cold. I mean, I'd be kind of pissed too. It's in Canada. It's December. It's probably like negative zero degrees. Yeah, hella cold. <laughs> <laughs> Nevertheless, the mounted police must have accomplished their first execution well enough. A more experienced spectator, a California 49er named Jim Reed, commented, That's the purest hanging I'd ever seen, and it's the 29th. So, nowadays, we view this as a psychosis. Um, so nowadays, we view as psychosis that the Cree thought to be to work of a Wendigo spirit, at one time in the belt of the parkland that borders the northern plains, it was far from being a rare phenomenon. Usually the symptoms were the same as those laid by swift fear. And in one way or another, most of the affected Wendigos met similar and violent deaths. So if you were found to be a cannibal because you're possessed by the Wendigo spirit, you probably got hanged. That's insane. That's, isn't that crazy? Yeah. So, on the drive, there's actually a picture, a mugshot, of Swift Runner and what he looked like. So, it has his name, uh, his age, and his height. And then next to it, there's also photos of, like, if you just Google it, like, the artsy, cartoony versions of it as well. So, that one just kind of blew my mind. I'll have to check it out. Very cool. Um, yeah, he had five kids. And he killed He killed them all? He ate all of them. His wife, five children, uh, his brother, and his mother-in-law. Yikes. So, yeah. it's funny that you, you talked about how, like... Uh, there was something you said, like eating the flesh of humans makes you crazy. And there's actually like some truth to that. Like, uh, we, I'm not a hundred percent sure if this is valid, but there's like, uh, if we eat human flesh, we get sick. It's like a, like, like a mad cow type disease, like a prion disease. Like we can't eat human. I'm not a hundred percent. So don't quote me. No, no, no. I think I've heard of uh, of this before. There's like something with your brain um, that you can actually go like crazy or like you get like really shaky because there are like some tribes that are cannibals um, and they're, like it's in their like belief to like sacrifice people and to like eat them. So, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it's like a mad cow yeah, type neurological neurologic like degenerative yeah. neurological so maybe he had something like that maybe he ate somebody before and he had that mad cow type disease seriously and he just had one and he's like oh kind of tastes like a uh, bacon nasty and, uh, i'm gonna get some more of that yuck <laughs> not good oh i did learn um in judaism uh one of charlie's friends they're Jewish, um, and in Judaism, they don't like to eat pork because they believe pork is too close to human meat. Yes. Because, like, skin grabs and, I don't know, I'm like, oh, my God, I don't eat pork. Yeah. <laughs> Yuck. Ah, that's crazy. That was such a good one. That was... You got for me today. Okay, so I have this. It's called Seven Sisters Road, and it's a mm -hmm. folklore folklore story that's pretty old from uh, Nebraska, where I was born, actually. Yeah, Nebraska? Huh? Hell yeah! Mm -hmm. I have a. Uh, they're not super long, so there's a couple different ones I might read depending on how long it takes. So this okay. one. I found on Reddit. Yes. Love Reddit. 
Good stuff. So, I lived in the same small, dreary Nebraska town my entire life. I'm not a hick, like most people that don't live in Nebraska assume, and we're not backward people either. We have running water, electricity, all that good stuff. Sure, sometimes we add an R in wash, but otherwise, we're exactly like everyone else, but I digress. About a two hour drive from my hometown, there lies Seven Sisters Road. Seven Sisters Road is one of the most popular ghost stories to be told around where I live. I remember my grandfather giving me and my sister the drunken version of the story every Saturday night. I would sit on the edge of my seat while he spouted beer-fueled nonsense about the road, fascinated by what little my eight-year-old mind could piece together, and I made it my life goal to actually get to drive down that road one day and see if the legends were true. The Seven Sisters Road, for those that don't know, is a sketchy, unmaintained stretch of road a few miles outside of Nebraska City. Now, Nebraska is no stranger to gruesome tales. We have the Witch's Bridge, the Ammunition Depot in my hometown, among others, but this has always stood out. This is by far the most blood-curdling piece of folklore the state has to offer. It starts with a man, as most of these tales do. He lived on this stretch of road with his seven daughters, and one day, for some unknown reason, he went completely bonkers and killed every last one of them. He lured them out of the house one by one, leading each one to a separate hill and hung them from the trees. Driving down the road... (laughs) I know. Shit. (laughs) Driving down the road can be dangerous. Cars will stall, headlights will dim, phone batteries will die without warning. Perhaps the most chilling is hearing the screams of the seven sisters. And all of that was merely a ghost story. Something I may be believed when I was eight or nine, but quickly passed off as a side effect of my grandpa's alcoholism. I started doing more research, but finding things on the internet about Nebraska is damn near impossible. Because really, who cares about the state that gifted us with Kool-Aid? All I could find were two websites explaining the legend in the exact same way uh, and a newspaper article about a new road plan. No history, no mention on if the murders actually happened, nothing. So I got ready to head out and keep my promise to my eight-year-old self. I was going to Seven Sisters Road. I armed myself with my car keys, my emergency backpack, picked up my best friend, and we were off. An hour and a half, two hours later maybe, saw us on the outskirts of Nebraska City. We stopped in town to fuel up grabbed some snacks, and headed back out. It was near dusk when we found the road. It's technically called Road L now. And I pulled onto the unpaved mess, my heart thrumming in my chest. A quarter of a mile down the road, and nothing had happened yet. I wanted to laugh it off, but being a lover of the paranormal and also a bit of a skeptic, I couldn't. Not this time. I needed proof that this road was going to stall my car or kill my phone, and I needed it bad. We passed the first hill, and still nothing but a rapidly beating heart and anxiety. My best friend scrolled through her phone, (laughs) unfazed and bored as ever. Honestly, we should turn back. Nothing's going to happen, she said. I shook my head and kept driving. We passed the second hill, and my car lets out a groan. Did you hear that? I asked, turning to my friend. She rolled her eyes. Okay, yes, but literally, your car always makes weird noises. That didn't prove anything. <laughs> Smart ass. This is me and you, by the way. <laughs> right. I'd be freaking out. So I'd be like, Pinky, I'm not going. I'm just like, whatever, stupid road. <laughs> I'm like, we're gonna die. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say anything for a minute until my headlights flickered. Did you fucking see that? I pointed excitedly. I did. My friend's face had gone white. What's up? You look sick. I reached down to the cup holder and handed her a bottle of water. Drink this. Dude, my phone is dead. I had half a charge. She croaked after taking a sip of the water. I laughed, giddy with delight that we were actually getting some results from this trip. After visiting most of the so-called paranormal locations in this boring-ass state, we were finally getting somewhere. This is amazing, I shouted. We were somewhere past the fourth or fifth hill, the sun finally having gone down. 
The pink streaks in the fluffy clouds were completely gone, leaving darkness in their wake. It wasn't until we were passing the sixth hill that the screaming started, and my blood ran cold. <laughs> nope, 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 nope. Now, the legend always recounted that it was the sisters that could be heard screaming, never the father, but the screams I heard were definitely male. I could hear distinctly female screams too, but they were always answered by a deep masculine voice that turned my blood into ice. We need to go, my friend stated plainly, her voice deadpan. Her white moon of a face illuminated by my dashboard lights. I nodded. The male voice sounded so much closer than the screaming of the sisters. They sounded as though they were coming from the inside of the car itself. And I willed myself not to turn around and check in the back seat, scared of what I might find. I swallowed painfully, my car rocking and rumbling its way down the road until we passed the seventh hill and everything stopped. The road was still unpaved but maintained. My headlights weren't flickering, but most importantly, there was dead silence. There wasn't a single scream to be heard. My friend and I let out a simultaneous sigh of relief. There was no way in hell I was going to go through that road to get back to Nebraska City. Nobody <laughs> could pay me enough to do so. <clears throat> I don't know what made it worse, though, the fact that the screaming male sounded close enough to be in my back seat, or the fact that we could have been stranded and nobody would have known. But I do know one thing. <laughs> Seven Sisters Road is definitely not some crackpot drunk's fictitious ramblings. If you decide to make the trek out there, please, please be careful. Carry a map instead of a GPS and always bring at least one more person. You never know what could happen. Bum, bum, bum. <laughs> no, I got goosebumps. I don't like that. But I do have a question. Since you grew up in Nebraska... Um, did you ever hear about that or were you, did you move to Arizona when you were too young? Um, I moved to Arizona when I was like 12 and I was definitely into that kind of stuff, but no, I never heard of it. I don't even think I've... So do you think it's true? I don't think I've been to Nebraska City. I don't know. It seems like a lot of people write about it and it sounds like a lot of Nebraskans talk about it. We can always go there and try it out if you want. Oh my god, nope. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm a chicken. I'm a big believer that you don't mess with anything like that. That's what you call like a dark, evil vortex. You know, you just let those people, those spirits, just, you know, do their thing. I'm good. Yeah, that's probably like the last thing you want to do is piss shit like that off. <laughs> and then I come home with you or something. Like yeah. It just like attaches itself to you, and then you're just like, well, this is my ghost, Mary. You know. <laughs> I don't know. You know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I, I don't like that. So I didn't read the whole article, but I guess that there was, like, some plan to build some, like, do something to the road there, but they decided not to because of it being haunted or something. I don't know. What? And this, oh my gosh. the trees eventually got cut down, and I guess the the hauntings happened after the trees got cut down or whatever. Wow. So what is it called? Seven Sister. Seven Sisters Nebraska Road. Road. Seven Sisters Road. It's in Nebraska City. I want to see. It's just a oh. dirt country road. <laughs> it's just nothing but dirt and probably some corn. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> Ugh, so I, like I grew up so, in Omaha, which is like an hour away. Yikes. So would that like screaming be like the dad, like still there, like tormenting the girls, or I don't know. Did he kill himself? Like I have. I don't think it, so many questions. I don't think it said that. And like, like the story said, there isn't a whole lot of information about it. It's like just people talking about it, because nobody cares about Nebraska. No, I care. I want to know. Somebody, oh, somebody on the Reddit thing said, um, "What if instead of it being the dad, it's somebody that went out there looking for the ghost and got stranded and is being tortured by the sisters or whatever?" Yuck. It's just some random Neither person. Yeah. Oh, I don't like that. Oh, nope, nope. I mean, Pinky, do you think we can go and save him? 
I think we can. Yeah, I don't know. I don't. I don't think we need. I don't know. I'm good. Come on, we can do it. <laughs> We'd be like, you know, please. I mean, we're really cool people, and and if you just like let them go, like we'll be chill. You'll be chill, and you know, it's all good. Hmm. I think I'm gonna pass. <laughs> Nebraska roads are scary without being haunted. It's just dark and really long, and gra gravel roads are scary. Yeah. That's so crazy. I am so fascinated by this. There's another... Like, just, like, looking... Mm -hmm. Looking at what? Just, like, the pictures of the road, and it, it, it's... Ugh. I don't like it. It's like, um, Chainsaw Massacre vibes. Yeah. You know, I've actually never seen the movie. I've heard of, like, how scary it actually is. Like, my sister watched it, and she told me, like, parts of the movie, and, no, nope, I've never seen it. I don't know. I've seen The Hills of Eyes, so I don't know if it's, like, worse or equivalent, but... I would say it's, like, a similar... I'm not really into, like, gore for gore. I used to be. I used to when I was younger. I love that shit, but now it's just like, nah. It's just gory. Yeah. Screaming and hiding and stupid bitches falling down and dying. Oh cause... my god! You're like, stand up! Run! Yeah, get up! Get up! Get up! Get up! <laughs> Pretty much. I swear to god, if I was you, I would not be dead right now. <laughs> okay, there's a, there's another another story. Do you want to hear it? Okay. This one's by David Ian McKendry. Okay. Back in high school, I was returning from a party in the middle of the night. There had been a summer thunderstorm earlier in the day, leaving a thick evening fog all over town. My car was your typical piece of shit high school student car with a busted headlight and only an AM FM radio that could only tuned into three stations. My route home took me down a one-lane gravel road surrounded by thick woods on either side. The road was a local celebrity with more haunted tales attached to it than a Poe anthology. Witches, demons, slaughtered hitchhikers, and Girl Scout troops. Never to be heard from again. It seemed that they all congregated on this twisted, unpaved thoroughfare. As my one headlight attempted to cut through the thick haze and illuminate one half of the road, my mind could not help but wonder what twisted evil was waiting for me on the other side of the fog. I turned up the radio. <laughs> you all right? Oh, I don't like it. But keep going. I love it. <laughs> I turned up the radio to drown out those thoughts, but it was that moment that some late-night radio DJ decided to play The End by The Doors, that sick son of a bitch. No matter where you live in America, your town probably has the same road. This road is older than the town and was probably laid down by the devil himself. It changes names from town to town and usually has a few nicknames attached to it as well. You'd have no problem driving it during the day, but would drive 20 miles out of your way to avoid driving down it at night. While driving cross-country one summer, I found myself in Nebraska City, Nebraska, enjoying a midnight breakfast at a local dinner. I got to talking with a waitress who asked me what I did in Los Angeles. Most of the time, I usually answer with broom salesman, but that night, I decided to mention that I work in horror. Almost immediately, she broke into a local tale about the Seven Sisters Road. Already fascinated by evil roads, I was instantly hooked and wanted to know more. The Seven Sisters Road sits just a few miles south of Nebraska City and is referred to as L Street on all the maps. According to the legend, back in the early 1900s, a young man was living with his parents and seven sisters. After a heated argument with his family, he left home but did not go far. He waited in the woods for his parents to leave. Once they were gone, the still enraged young man returned. Finding his sisters home alone, he led them out one by one to separate trees and hung each of them until they were all dead. It's a little different than the last one. The last one was the dad. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The waitress then said that when they built the road, years later, they had to chop down seven trees, all in a perfect row to allow for the road. To this day, people report hearing screams late at night. Some even say that their lights always dim as they drive on that road, only to brighten up 
once they turn off of it. That night, I decided to take a little detour from the highway and drive a little farther south of Nebraska City. Keeping an eye on my phone, I watched as L Street crept up closer. At that moment, and for reasons I can't explain, I decided to turn on the radio. Almost immediately, I was greeted by the voice of Jim Morrison me melodically singing about his only friend, The End. Instantly, flashing back to high school, I decided to drive past the Seven Sisters Road and let my phone reroute me back to the highway. Perhaps some roads are better traversed in daytime, and some songs should never be played at night. <laughs> Oh my god. So, okay, in that story, who let the sisters out to kill them? The brother. The brother. Yeah. Interesting. So it's definitely a male figure. Yeah. In a game of telephone going on. <laughs> <laughs> or, unpopular opinion, since it is Nebraska, the brother could also be the dad. <laughs> Oh, hey, that's messed up. <laughs> Take that for the spooky scaries. Oh my god. Incest murders. Incest murderers. Da da da. That's crazy. Oh my gosh. Like, like, I wonder how that conversation went of like, hey, I need to talk to you. Can you go out, you know, little of the night, most likely, one by one, you know, can I just like talk to you over here? I and how does that happen? I envisioned it much more violent, like dragging them outside. Oh, like dragging them. Yeah, going to find each one and dragging them outside. I don't know. Uh... That makes a lot more sense than like, la, 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 can you just follow me to this pretty little Christmas tree out here? And I'd be like, okay. <laughs> and that's how doll dies. <laughs> no, I don't know. And it's weird that there's like not any official record of it or any information about it. Is it because it didn't happen or is it because it's just Nebraska and people don't care? Right. I don't know. I wonder if it's just like, you know, it could be true, but like maybe like way back in the day when people could actually get with murder. Oh, and yeah. And like, since it's so rural and like middle of nowhere, like people could actually get away with like seven people missing. Yeah, that's probably more likely. It's apparently a really old story. Dang. That's so crazy. Oh, I don't like that. Did you the fact that he was like a seven sister, seven different areas, and then like people's phones just like don't work. Yeah, I kind of want to know now. I do. I kind of want to go. Maybe I'll have my dad yeah. take me next time I visit. <laughs> Be a, yeah, you should definitely ask your dad about it and be like, "Hey, have you heard about that?" <laughs> he he says he doesn't care about stuff like that. <laughs> Oh, come on. He, well, I'd never heard of it, and I've lived in Nebraska for quite a while. True. Yeah, and it's only like an hour away. Maybe, like, they're just, like, you know, trying to get some traffic or something. I don't know. It doesn't look like there's any restaurants or anything to, like, help the economy or anything, so. Yeah, I don't know what Nebraska City is <laughs> like at all. I've never been there. Omaha is a pretty big city. Is it? Yeah. That's so crazy. Yeah, I'm just gonna like, look at pictures. Ooh. Ah, it's like one of those. It's like where where you need more information, but it's not out there. But it's like, please. Right. <laughs> That's all I got. Dang, son. That's pretty good. That was really creepy. <laughs> So yeah, so we have some, you know, cannibalism in here, and then, you know, we got some seven sisters that just go on a walk, and then they, like, never come back. You know, it happens to the best of us sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> and that wraps up the Spooky Scary Show. If you wish to stay up to date with us, be sure to follow us on YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram. Thanks for listening. Bye-bye. 